Baton Lender. So, good morning again, everybody. And uh, my talk is going to be about adding IO to the real world and the new form factor we're going to use to do that. So, to begin, it's always great to follow Pranav because he does such a great job explaining the problems in our space and how we actually need to connect the digital and the physical world. So on the screen here you see the picture of Padi Maz, Professor Padi Maz, the Media Lab, our advisor, and her desk is a really good example of how complex is the real world. So we work with multiple devices and notes and documents, papers, and it's our job to combine them. And being human we have a very narrow pipe to actually accomplish that. We are responsible for that, for that connection and it's a hard job. So in fact we have adapted to our interfaces and not vice versa. And another way to look at the same problem is that we all become curators of devices. It's, it's almost as if we babysit them. We charge them and we carry all the cables and, and update the software and we take, take care of all the information that needs to go through between them. And so they're definitely part of our environment but they're not embedded in it. So what we do in our lab as we try to think out of the box and, and come up with radical yet relevant uh, form factors to solve this problem. And when I was starting to think about this, my, my thoughts were, wouldn't it be great if anywhere we had a power socket and wireless communication where we just have a natural interface to the web? And then what if that interface could look like this, a very familiar object that, that, that never left us since it was invented? Um, and then, earlier this year, I started working on the Luminar project. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about the name, it's a play on the word Luminaire, which is a single unit of lighting, and then we just changed the end, and we add uh, augmented reality to it, um, and you get uh, Luminar, which is a robotic uh, lamp uh, that is capable of augmenting the world around it. Now, this, this is not an entirely new uh, concept. It was introduced about 10 years ago by one of my predecessors in the lab, John Underkoffler. But it's only now that we're able to actually implement it. Uh, so I want to show you a quick video of the prototype we have in the lab. This is a luminar lamp. It's a new augmented reality robotic interface. It has basically two parts. One is the luminar bulb, which I'm holding in my hand right now. It's a compact form factor for a projective camera system. This is the projector, this is the camera. This is capable of projecting information and interfaces on the environment and surfaces. So it can be your desk, or it can be the wall. Here in particular, in this setup, we have a particular robotic arm that we can drive around. For example, if I gesture it like so, and maybe, maybe you can move to a different location in my space. And this location, can be one that I've taught this robot to find again and show me my email app. Or maybe when I'm working on my desk, this robot can figure out where is a space without clutter so, so it can decide to actually give me that application over here. So it's designed for quick interaction. Basically the promise of this is having the internet everywhere you want to. We have a design that contains all the components required to do all this in the ball. So you can actually take this ball and put it in a standard light fixture like this one. And although it's not robotic, you can set it up to have coverage on an area you're interested in. This is a new form factor for a computer. The most computers that we know of today are prison cells for pixels. The pixels are on the screens. This uh, interface, this robotic information interface, releases the pixels from the screen. Basically, we can put them on either spaces. It's a system that can reach further into your real environment and put uh, digital information virtually anywhere. Thank you. So, um, uh, what you see on the slide up here is our latest prototype for the bulb, and it really integrates all the all the components. And what I'm holding in my hand is a mock-up of. of one of the previous version, but it's a good it's a good example of the form factor we're driving towards. Uh, we're really driving hard on 20 volts. We have a gear motor that helps us spin on, on its uh, pivot here. 
there is a, this is where the projector goes, and here we're collaborating with Intel to create this into an atom uh, inside device, so this will have more power than your iPads probably. Now the key promise of this is, again, where you have power socket and wireless, you have the internet. Now, it's also just a bulb that has some LEDs. Now this is the arm, it's a four degree uh, of freedom arm, it has a reach of about two feet, and proportions of just, uh, um, uh, both mechanically and, and in terms of design, the same angle points task light that was uh, built in the 30s. And once you have a lamp and a bulb together, uh, you have a computer that can move, so it can follow the user, or it can use behavior to communicate, much like the picture lamp. So some of you in the audience may think, well, we're going towards personal information uh, robotics now, great. And I just don't want to be very cautious about that, because actually, if we're successful, robotics doesn't matter at all. It's, they're irrelevant. What we want to do is make the robot disappear and have the experience as seamless and natural as possible. So here, this is just for fun to show you the progression that we've made, from starting from the locks of the lamp to our first generation, and this is our second generation, all the way to the left. And here is our latest and greatest, this is the generation 3. And let me share a few quick ideas for applications that we have in mind. Um, so imagine you're cooking um, and your hands are all dirty and greasy and this super urgent email comes in and you have to answer it. Now you're not going to pull in your iPhone without washing your hands first, but if it's just your kitchen counter, then I guess that's fine. Uh, you're just going to do that there and then. And then in Future retail environments, uh, smart uh, product counters may come alive with information and they may detect the product that uh, a consumer is interested in. Again, removing the step of pulling your smartphone and looking for uh, a price comparison, for example. Here in this example, we're showing uh, how objects that you put under this lamp can be uh, recognized immediately, much like Google Goggles recognizes places. Uh, you can pull just-in-time information, so maybe if you're drinking Coke, you can get the nutrition values. It's kind of important. Um, and here's a, here's a concept for a, an augmented reading device that combines uh, physical print material like magazines and books and, and digital, and we're, um, d digital information. And we're thinking about e-books, but here's an e-book with a real book. And it's very interesting to see how this transforms into a new, a new machine for education. And there are many, many more use cases for, for design, for gaming, and, and so on. But all of the use cases share one common principle. They, they enable what I like to think about as a true augmented uh, reality experience, in the sense that, one, you can use both your hands, and two, there is no context switch between displays, because the worlds are really combined. Now, this is very different than what we have today with uh, uh, mobile phones, where you just have to pull and you know, go back and forth between reality and, and the digital information. Now, let me finish my segment with giving you uh, a few thoughts about uh, how, how this is going to go forward in the future. So, first, it's not going to render existing form factor obsolete. On the contrary, uh, I believe this can become a glue device that connects several uh, devices together and helps us transform media across devices and, and, and make our experience uh, uh, faster and better. And then, another question that people may have is probably, is the Loxel lamp the end-all ultimate interface? Well, probably not. It's not the best form factor for everything. And we're already working on new form factors. And uh, I think it's a pretty easy claim to make when, you know, just the day after Apple TV is relaunched. And, and um, my personal prediction is that we will start seeing several additional new interfaces to the cloud up here uh, very soon. And in that sense, our work here is uh, very much work in progress. So, that's it for me today. Thank you very much.